Wednesday, October 21st. Uh, time for some math and uh, let's get started. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, so you have a warm up. Oh, I've put a fraction in the warm up. And let me just tell you right now, that's the only fraction you're going to see today. There are no fractions in today's lesson, but we are going to practice that one subtraction problem there in your warm up. So do the warm up and then come on back and uh, we will do today's lesson. Okay, welcome back. Um, let's solve this first problem from the warm up. This is very similar to what we were doing on Monday this week. So the first thing I'm going to do is rename all my subtraction as addition. And so I've got x plus 4 plus a negative 1 times x plus a negative 5. Okay. And now I look at that first, um, that x plus 4 um, expression, and there's just a 1 in front, a positive 1 in front. So there's nothing I need to do with it. So I can just drop the parentheses there and say this is x plus 4 plus, and now I need to distribute. Negative 1 times x is a negative 1x plus a negative 1 times a negative 5 is a positive 5. And now I'll combine like terms. Well, I have an x here, which is a 1x, right? 1x plus a negative 1x, they're canceled, they're gone. So there's no x's left. And I'm left with 4 plus 5, which is 9. It doesn't happen very often, but we got one that reduced down to just 9. OK? All right, number 2, 1 and 2 thirds minus a negative 2 and 3 fifths. OK. So this is a subtraction problem. And the first thing I want to do with the subtraction problem is turn it into an addition problem. So I've got 1 and 2 thirds. Instead of subtracting a negative 2 and 3 fifths, I'm going to add a positive 2 and 3 fifths. All right, I have no negative numbers in that one. That's awesome. OK, but I, have un, um, I don't have a common denominator. So I need to get my common denominator, which between 3 and 5 is 15. So in order to get from 3 to 15, I had to multiply by 5. So I have to multiply by 5 on the top. So this becomes 1 and 10 fifteenths plus 2. And I've got to multiply by 3. So I have 9 fifteenths. And then to add the fractions, I'm going to add the whole number part. And then I'm going to add the fraction part. So I have 3 and 19 fifteenths. OK, but I can't leave it that way because 19 fifteenths is an improper fraction. So 19 fifteenths is the same as 1 and 4 fifteenths, right? Because 15 fifteenths is 1, and that leaves me with 4. And so my answer is actually going to be 4, or, yeah, 4 and 4 fifteenths, OK? So I take the 3 plus that, OK? That's my answer. Number three is kind of a fun little problem. It's order of operations problem with a lot of twos. So I have two plus two times two minus two to the second divided by two plus two. OK, so the whole point of this problem is that you follow order of operations. Order of operations says I do parentheses first. There's no parentheses. Then I do exponents, and I do have an exponent. So I have 2 plus 2 times 2 minus 2 to the second power is 4 divided by 2 plus 2. OK, after exponents, it's multiply and divide from left to right. So I do all the multiplication and division from left to right in the expression. 2 plus, OK, I have 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 4 divided by 2 is 2 plus 2. OK, and now I will just add and subtract from left to right. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6. So that's the answer you should have gotten, the 6. There's a lot of different answers you could get if you mix up your order of operations, OK? OK, so that's today's warm up. 
um, let's get to the lesson. Okay, so today we're continuing with our essential question about using um, equations to model real life problems. And today we're gonna solve one step equations involving integers, okay? So no fractions, no decimals, all integers today. Um, I'm gonna start kind of at the beginning and model what an equation looks like. Um, we're gonna take it really slow today. So hopefully this is a great catch up day for those of you that are maybe struggling with some of the concepts of equations, because I know you did them a little bit with Mrs. Breyer. Um, so we're coming back to that and hopefully getting everybody together on the same page so that then we can progress a little bit. So let's get my whiteboard up. Okay, so everything that we've been doing for the last you know, week and a half or so has been with expressions. Today we're gonna start with talking about equations. And so an equation is a math sentence. And the key piece of punctuation in our sentence is the equal sign. And so an equation is stating that two expressions are equal. So I have an expression on one side and it's equal to an expression. And this is an equation. Okay, and the key to this, the key piece of this is that equal sign and that, because that equal sign is saying they are equal. This is a true statement, okay? So let's think about, um, let's think about an equation. Let's think about an equation like x plus four equals six. So I have an expression, x plus four, and it's equal to another expression. In this case, the expression is just six. It's a really simple expression. And remember that an equation is telling us that they're equal, they're balanced. And so another way to think about that is like a seesaw or a balance. I like to call them seesaws because when I was little, that's what we had, we had seesaws. I don't even know if they have seesaws at the parks anymore. Um, but it was basically, you know, where someone would sit on each side and you'd go up and down and it'd be really cool if you could get it to balance. Well, an equation is like a balanced seesaw. And so if I think about my equation, x plus four equals six, on this side of the seesaw, or on this side of the balance, I have six stones, six identical stones, okay? And on the other side of the balance, I have this box that's got something in it, okay? I'll call it x, and then I have four stones. And so remember, an equation is balanced. It has to be the same on both sides. And so I'm trying to figure out what's inside that box. What's x? One way to think about that, like if I had a seesaw and I put those stones on there, if I took away, what if I took away these four stones on this side? Well, if I'm gonna take away the four stones on this side and keep it balanced, I have to take away four stones on this side too, right? They would have to go away. Well, what's left? I have two stones left on this side and I have my box on this side. Well, that tells me what's in the box because if it's gonna be balanced, then what's in the box has to be the same as what's left on this side. And so in the box, there are two stones or X equals two. Okay, so let's think about that mathematically. Okay, rather than adding stones and taking away stones on a balance, let's think about that mathematically and what did I just do? Well, I, I'm trying to figure out what's in the box. So I need to get the box by itself. I need to get X by itself. In order to do that, I subtracted what else was there with X because I had added, so there were four stones there with my box of X, right? So if I take away those four stones on both sides, because I have to take away the same amount on both sides, well, if I take away the stones, if I started with four stones and I take away four stones, I have zero stones left, they're gone. So all that's left on this side is X. And then on the other side, I started with six and I took away four and I was left with two. Okay, 
That's what we're doing when we're solving a one-step addition equation. We're looking at what was being added to x, and we're going to take that away on both sides to get x by itself. Okay? All right, let me get my notes here. So let's talk about our goal in solving an equation. Okay, we want to get the variable isolated. Okay, and I'm gonna say by itself. That's what isolated means. If you are isolated, you're by yourself, right? We wanna isolate the variable. We want to get the variable by itself on one side of the equation. And everything else on the other side. Of the equation. OK, that's our goal. That's the number one thing that you have to think about when you're solving equations is you're trying to get the variable by itself. So today, everything we're doing is addition equations. OK, so addition equations. I'll go back to that example that I had, which was x plus 4 equals 6. In an addition equation, something's being added to x. Okay, so in every equation that we have today, something's being added to the variable. Adding and subtracting are inverse operations. If I start with a plate of cookies, okay, let's start, if I start with four cookies and I add two cookies, but then I take away two cookies, I still have four cookies, right? Because I added two, but then I took them away. Adding and subtracting can undo each other. And so addition equations, are solved by subtracting, okay? If you have an addition equation, an equation where something's being added to x or the variable, you're gonna solve it by subtracting because addition and subtraction are inverse operations. They undo each other, okay? Which is what we did with the stones. There were four stones and so to get rid of those four stones, we took them away. We subtracted them. Okay. So let's do a couple of examples. Let's do x plus 5 equals 12. This is an addition equation. So what's being done to x? I'm adding 5. How do I get x by itself? In order to get x by itself, I have to subtract 5 on both sides. Because remember, if I, if I want to keep my equation balanced, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. That's what keeps it, it balanced. That's what keeps the seesaw level, okay? Well, five minus five is zero. And so all I'm left with on this side is x. 12 minus five is seven. And I've solved it. I figured out what x is. So when you're doing these, the other thing that's really important is that you check your answer. Go back and make sure that your answer makes sense. So if I look at my original equation, which was x plus 5 equals 12, let's plug in my answer. Well, I said that x is 7. OK, well, if 7 plus 5 equals 12, is that true? 7 plus 5 is 12. So 12 equals 12, it works out. I say check, I got it right. Now, what if I'd, I'd gotten like 13 equals 12? that means something's wrong. That means I didn't get the right answer or I didn't check it properly, okay? If, you're, if you get a true statement, it generally means you've got the right answer unless you made a mistake in your check, okay? It's always good to check, especially, I always tell my students, it's good to check when the stakes are high and the stakes are high on a quiz or a test. And right now, since you're just learning, it's good to check. Um, so that you get the practice. And so tonight's homework assignment, there's only about nine problems. I really would like you to check them, okay? All right, let's do another one. Let's do um, 15 equals x plus two. 
Okay, I wrote it backwards this time. I've got the X on the right side and that's okay. It doesn't matter which side X is on. What matters is that you pay attention to what's being done to X, okay? So in this case, I'm adding two. So in order to solve the equation, in order to get X by itself, I have to subtract two. If I subtract two on this side, I have to subtract two on the other side. And so I'm left with X, because those cancel, equals 15 minus two is 13. Okay, and it's okay to write it that way. 13 equals X means the same as X equals 13. If you really wanna flip it around, you can. Okay, now let's do a couple that have got negative numbers in them. Let's do X plus seven equals a negative 12. Don't let the negative numbers mess with you, okay? We're just gonna follow the same rules that we always follow with positive and negative numbers. Let's look at our example, so, or look at our equation. What's being done to X? I'm adding seven. So to solve it, I need to subtract seven on both sides. So X equals, this is negative 12 minus seven. How do I solve an integer subtraction problem? I turn it into an addition problem. X equals negative 12 plus a negative seven. X equals negative 19. Now, some of you may be able to do that in your head. You don't need to write it out, that's fine. But I wanna cover every step so we make sure that we know what we're doing, okay? And we could check that. We could plug, plug that back in and say X plus seven equals negative 12, negative 19 plus seven equals a negative 12. And yeah, negative 19 plus seven is negative 12. Check. Okay, one more. Let's do x plus a negative 2 equals 5. All right, now I'm adding negative numbers. It's okay. Okay, remember it's an addition problem. The way we solve an addition problem is by subtracting. And so I'm going to subtract a negative 2 on both sides. Write it out that way. Negative two minus a negative two cancels each other out. I'll do it off to the side. You don't always have to do this, but negative two minus a negative two is the same as negative two plus two. Negative two plus two is zero. They cancel each other out. And I'm left with X equals five minus a negative two. I'm gonna turn that into an addition problem. Five minus a negative two is five plus two, x equals seven. Okay, that's it. So just to recap what we're doing today. Um, actually, let me, let me show you a couple more little tricks because you might see these in your assignment. Um, what if you have a problem like x plus two to the third equals 10? You need to simplify that first. What's two to the third? Two times two times two. So this becomes x plus eight equals 10. Now you've got your one step equation and you can solve it, okay? You might see something like that. You might see something like x plus the absolute value of negative two equals seven. Okay, simplify it. What's the absolute value of negative two? Two. This is now x plus two equals seven. You can solve that equation, okay? And then one more you might see is something like x plus four equals, um, let's say 12 plus a negative three, okay? Simplify this. What is 12 plus a negative three? It's nine x plus four equals nine. So you might see a couple little variations there where you have to simplify something before you can solve your equation. Just keep that in mind, okay? All right, let's get um, back over to your homework assignment. Okay, so like I said, you have, um, you have a worksheet. Um, it's only, I think, got nine or 10 problems on it. Do all the problems. Um, take your time, check, please. I would recommend you check every problem um, just so you have the practice. Think about how you feel about today's lesson. Um, talk to your tutor this afternoon or next time you meet with your tutor about any of the concepts you don't understand. 
And um, I think that's it. And then tomorrow we're going to do more one step addition equations, but we're going to add some fractions and decimals in. Okay. So let's close in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow.